Hello once again. Welcome to another episode of Bibliophiles, the little show on AADL TV brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library, where we take a few moments each week to discuss one book topic, a different one each time. My name is Amanda and I'm joined by Lucy and Christopher as always. And this week we are discussing what's a really great novel that you enjoyed that is contemporary adult fiction. Hmm. Christopher, what did you bring to the table this week? Well, this is a book that I have previously mentioned on Bibliophiles, uh, and I have owned it for a while, but didn't get to it, mostly because I thought the topic was too disturbing and it would be too upsetting and hard to get into. I'm so glad I gave it a real chance because after about three or four pages, I was completely hooked. And it's a book by Elif Shafak. She is a Turkish English author. It's called 10 Minutes, 38 Seconds in This Strange World. I have never read anything by a Turkish author. This book was very uh, eye-opening to what it might be like to grow up in Turkey. It's a country I know really nothing about. The plot of the book is upsetting. Uh, essentially, a woman has been murdered and left in a garbage bin. And between the time that her heart stops beating and her brain stops functioning, she has 10 minutes and 38 seconds to recount her entire life. She details all of her very dear friends and how she met each one of them. She looks back on her childhood and the oppression that she faced and the problems that she had. And she looks back on running away from home and ending up in Istanbul and how she became a prostitute. Um, the first part of the book is her recollections. The second part of the book is all about what her friends do after they discover that she has been killed. And you would think the book would be just so oppressive and heavy to read. In fact, it's really a celebration of life and friendship. And I cannot wait to see what else Elif Shafak writes. I think she has a brand new book coming out in a few months. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, Lucy, do you have something possibly more uplifting than that. <laughs> um, I don't know if it, well, no, 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 probably not more <laughs> uplifting. Um, I really struggled to narrow this down to choose one book, but I happen to have just finished a book that came out in um, uh, probably maybe March of 2021. It is called How Beautiful We Were by Mbolo Mbue. And um, this is a book about a made up, village in Africa called Kosoa. And it is um, a town where an American company has come in and mined for oil and built pipelines under the village. And um, so it is about this village and the people who live there. And it's narrated in different points of view, but the first group that narrates it is a collective voice of the children in the village. So I thought that was really interesting. And right away, I have to tell you that like the first sentence is, we should have known the end was near. How could we not have known? When the sky began to pour acid and rivers began to turn green, we should have known our land would soon be dead. So you read that and you're like, okay, I gotta know what's going on. So you have this collective voice from the children and then you go in and out of chapters with this one family. So like um, a mother, a grandmother, a brother, a sister who eventually moves to America to try and fight the American company that has really degraded their entire village. Um, and at the beginning of the book, children in the village are getting sick and dying because their water's polluted, their ground's polluted. And um, that collective group of kids, that voice that you hear in the beginning, you hear them again when they are teenagers and you hear them again when they're adults with their own kids. So they keep coming back. And what you realize is that throughout 
every generation, this is still what's going on in this village. So not more uplifting than your choice, Christopher, but um, really relevant. And I mean, I think the themes of like colonialism, uh, the valuation of profit over human lives and over the environment, those are all things that we are seeing all the time. Um, the author is from Cameroon and she has seen experiences like this in small villages. And then she also was thinking about oil being mined in Nigeria and how that's just destroyed the land there. So though her village was fictional, I think she was basing it on real ideas. And the book becomes very interesting when you see how uh, powerless this village is to fight against an American corporation. Um, that all of that fight has to take place in a country that's not even their own. And um, it was long and I just tore through it. It was, um, I think because the structure of it, the narrator keeps changing. And I've, I've not read a lot of books where a narrator is a collective group of people that way. And you see how much they're affected by what's going on. So um, it gets into some uh, revolution and a discussion about violence versus nonviolence and how those tactics work to make change. So um, it was, there was just so much in it and she is such a great writer and I really recommend it. Um, so it's How Beautiful We Were by Mbulo Mbue. And um, yeah, that's my pick, but not very cheery either. So Amanda, do you have something that is more uplifting? I do. I do have an uplifting book, but I also think that the two books you mentioned, part of the reason why they were so well enjoyed and loved by you both is because of the, the content, you know? It's, it's good to read those things. It just really roots you into a good book. It's feeling, I'm reading another book for something else now, and it, it's giving me those kinds of feelings. Um, but today I brought a fun book to the table. This book is a 2016 adult fiction novel called Be Frank With Me by Julia Claiborne Johnson. And this was the author's debut novel. And it is called Be Frank With Me. And the story features an author. Um, she wrote a book. She won a bunch of awards. She was like the hit and then she disappeared and then she runs into um money problems there's a ponzi scheme she falls into or something and she needs money so she has to whip out a book really fast according to her publishers editors if she can write a book really fast she can you know get back in the game and get money to solve her problems um so they hire an assistant for her and her assistant is a young woman i believe her name is alice and part of her um her job is to help care for Mimi's a nine-year-old son, Frank. Now, Frank is, be frank with me, so this, he is the light of the whole book. He's nine, going on like 40. He's, he's quirky, he's interesting, he's hyper, um, he talks matter-of-factly, he's very, very smart, he's brilliant, um, he loves 1930s movies, he dresses in like top coats or top hats and coattails, um, he's always doing these movie references. Um, he has a list of rules that his um, caretaker, Alice, is supposed to follow. He doesn't get along, along well with other children. Um, he's just a very unique and interesting child. And it's hilarious. The, 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 some of the stuff he says and how he interacts with Alice and his mom, who is like locked away in her bedroom writing. Um, it's just, it's really charming and funny. And it's a good read, like if anybody, if you've read Where'd You Go Bernadette, where there's like um, kind of a reclusive author. Um, and I read that book and I, I like this one more. I really, really enjoyed this book. And I feel like I don't know enough people who've read it. Um, I even recommended this to my sister who doesn't read a lot of adult fiction or anything. And she really enjoyed it. It's just funny. It's an easy breezy read. Um, I just really enjoyed reading the story of this, um, this single mother with this gifted child. And you kind of are piecing together puzzles of like, well, where's Frank's dad? Who is Frank's dad? Who is this other person? You're trying to put these pieces together um, and just seeing how they manage each other like as a family um, and this author. So I also love the literary references in books and you get a little bit of that with um, this eccentric like hold away um, reclusive author Mimi Banning and her son Frank. So there is that light enough for you guys? <laughs> uh, it was really fun. It was really a fun read. I recommend it. Um, any final thoughts on contemporary adult fiction? before we go? No, we're feeling good. I'm, I'm getting, getting some invisible thumbs up from the crowd. 
um, or my co-host. So um, we will leave it there for today. I know there are so many of you out there who have read some really great contemporary adult fiction. Let us know about it. Um, the link below will take you to the library's um, website where you can leave a little comment on this topic for this page. We want to hear your choices. What are you reading? Recommend some stuff. If you read anything that we mentioned that you want to give some um, nod to, please do so. We are on YouTube. I have to say this. Um, go ahead, click like, click subscribe, show your library some love. And that's it for this week of Bibliophiles. Um, have a great week and we'll see you next time.